I'll show you some close-ups of some of the echinoderm calyxes I found over the years. And the most common one of all is called Ectenoprocrinus. There are over uh, three dozen species of crinoids that we find here in the Cincinnati. When they were alive, they were open like flowers. When they were died and fossilized, they close up and uh, usually they look like mops, so to speak. The most common way of finding them, all the individual plates separated from the, the ossicles. However, here they are, and they're in fragments of uh, four, three, four, five, still stuck together, so that stem is starting to disintegrate, not completely. Here are some crinoids with some very ornate uh, calyxes. This, this, this is a type of glyptocrinus. You can go to the Dry Dredger website, drydredgers.org, and look up the crinoid species, and there's a lot of information. Very technical information. What My videos are just very simple. And what you're seeing here is Again, just a fragment of the calyx. The stem is missing and the upper arms are missing. But the, uh, the upper arms are very fragile. And they've broken off uh, while they were waiting around in cliffs to be collected. They're... This is a very large holdfast of one of the largest crinoids in the Cincinnati called Anomalocrinus. Its stem is usually as thick as a pencil. Look for uh, parts one, two, or three. I'm going to add more and more species and other specimens that other people have found and brought to the dry dredger meetings. Uh, so take the time and look at... Uh, you'll see far superior specimens in my next videos. Crinoids. S some crinoids could actually uh, wrap around the bottom uh, stem, the holdfast could wrap around almost like a prehensile tail and hold on to things and that's exactly what you're seeing here uh, some crinoids have been known to wrap around and attach themselves to other crinoids to get higher up um, it's almost like a ladder one on top of another there's some individual stem pieces and you will see them actually You'll see the impressions that they've made just rolling along the sea bottom. You'll see multiple parallel subtle lines that these have made dragging across the sea seabeds. And some of these uh, stems have been grown over with bryzoa, which is what you're seeing there. In this Riker mount, all of these ectanocrinus crinoids have been found at the same location. Uh, near a grocery store where I live, and we'd let uh, mom do the shopping while me and the boys would go out and collect fossils. And one memorable trip, we uh, I went out and found ten in one little spot. I was just happy as a clam, happy as a crinoid, I guess. fragments of their um, arms. This is a feather star swimming. Check this out on YouTube. It's just amazing how fast it can move those arms. Another feather star swimming. So look up a crinoids and see what you see on YouTube. The most common way of finding crinoids is disarticulated all their little individual plates this is a very common rock layer uh, in the Cincinnati and to find to find that the rock layer covered by uh, crinoid ossicles and this is a close-up of what it looks like in the middle of the brown thing is a uh, trilobite fragment 
fragments of other things. There's a free cheek of a trilobite, but predominantly it's entirely crinoid. That's cool. Most of these are round and bead-like. A few of them have some telltale differences. The one right in the center right now has little uh, spoke-like things sticking out the edges. It's not perfectly round. That's a different species than the other type. This one right dead in the middle, that uh, has a five star, uh, see the five dots around the center dot? That's a different species. Most of your crinoid columns are round, however some are square, some are even five-sided. And this type of uh, crinoid stem is indeed five-sided. Instead of the round, here's a close-up. The second most common way of finding crinoid stems, calyx, is missing. Here's a close-up. You can identify the species just by this pattern of the plates and the shape of the plates alone. Just as you can identify the species of a tree just from the tree leaves. My thumb for scale. These are about uh, a little bit thicker than a pencil lead. It's the common size you find in Cincinnati. As thick as a pencil. That's about the maximum size you find in Cincinnati. Okay, what's very unusual about this rock slab is it has what's called a log jam. Very high concentrations of crinoids grew and then they were smothered in place by other uh, sediments. Most likely a hurricane sea storm came along and just mowed them over, bent them over and covered them up. So they're buried buried alive and that's why you see just hundreds of their uh, stems and because it was instant burial uh, these things are whole. So the calyxes, the crowning flowery uh, filter feeding arms, they are found on this one. Um, there's one here, partially exposed. There's another one there. There's another. I'll give you a close up, you can see the individual plates. Uh, the top of the arms are missing. There's another one there. There's another. I'll give you a close up, you can see the individual plates. The top of the arms are missing. Look at the top of the rock, how many stems are sticking out of this rock. So this was extremely rich uh, concentration of, of uh, crinoids. In fact, that's a calyx right there. That very, that dome is the, uh, the calyx it's going into the matrix. You can see why it gets the name log jam. It looks looks like that on a much smaller scale.
the kicks in the down position.